let's talk about solar faults, or more specifically, its inaccuracies and how they are corrupted. I'll discuss topics like the sizes, the colors, the shapes, and stuff like that. Not only will you learn where they got it wrong, but the crew will as well, since everybody makes mistakes. I'll ignore some stuff like the talking planets, communication in the vacuum, and other pull and bar related stuff. And to be clear, I have no intention to harm or disrespect anyone behind the show, or even the show itself. I'm just a nerd and astronaut wannabe. Anyway, let's dig in. The first thing I like to consider is the colors of the celestial bodies. They are somewhat really wrong. For example, the sun is meant to be pure white, Venus's surface is more of a basalt color, and Neptune is more similar to Uranus. Some of the only characters, if not the only ones, that have their true colors are Triton and Pluto. I have already created a video on this topic, so feel free to check it out if you're interested. The next thing to consider is the shapes of the characters. Most of them are shown to be perfect spheres, but as Jupiter said before, we're not perfect spheres. In fact, we all stretch based on the gravitational forces that pull us. It is correct, but it still doesn't consider how the rotational speeds alter the format of the object. The characters I'd like to talk about are the most notable ones. Ceres, Jupiter, Saturn, Iapetus, Miranda, Charon, and Quawar. Ceres, Jupiter, and Saturn each rotate really fast around once every 9.07 hours, 9.92 hours, and 10.5 hours, respectively. The ones with more time to rotate appear less flat, but Saturn is the flattest because of its density too. Iapetus and Quobar are also flat, but they do not have fast days. Exclusive to Iapetus, it has an equatorial ridge. Miranda and Charon are not exactly spherical, but they're also not that irregularly shaped. You may think the sizes have already been resolved in the solar system's true scale, but that only covers the distances of the objects. I want to refer to stuff like the diameters. For instance, Mars in this show is around four-fifths the size of Earth, when in reality, he's around half his size. Jupiter is around half the size of the Sun, when he's meant to be a tenth of the size of the star. If you want some accurate sizes of some objects, I'll leave the link to a video below. Oh my gosh, this one really annoys me. They pronounce some of the names incorrectly, but I shouldn't be too mad at them. I'll just correct some, if not all, of the mispronounced names. Thea is Thea, Phobos is Phobus, Deimos is Dimus, Metis is Metis, Amaltia is Amalthea, Thebe is Thebe, Ganymede is Ganymede, Alara is Elara, Eupori or Euporia is Eupuri, Calicor is Calicari, Iapetus is Iapetus, and I'm not doing the moons of Neptune. I'm leaving a link down below on how to pronounce them. This one is particularly worth noting, the context of Planet X. It's going to be very long, but before I start, I'll explain the fifth giant and Planet Nine. The fifth giant is a hypothetical ice giant originating from the five-planet Nice model, which states that the solar system began with five giant planets instead of just four. This extra one, located between the orbits of Saturn and Uranus during the process of planetary migration, was scattered inward by Saturn and then ejected out of the solar system entirely by Jupiter, causing their semi-major axes to jump. This scenario is known as the Jumping Jupiter Scenario. Planet 9 is a hypothetical super-Earth, or even mini-Neptune, that was supposed to explain the clustering of extreme trans-Neptune objects, or others for short, as they all seem to go in one direction. Its orbit stretches at around 370 AU at aphelion, and 200 AU at perihelion. Planet X in the show seems to merge the fifth giant and Planet 9 hypotheses, and it's pretty accurate since Planet 9 could be the fifth giant all along. 
There are some other things worth noting, but this video will be too long, so it'll be a topic for another day. Say in the comments if you want an entire video on this topic. The show considers Proto-Earth and Earth to be different objects, but they are meant to be the same. Proto wasn't destroyed during the Thea impact. In fact, Proto-Earth, or Early Earth, refers to the Earth in its first billion years, and not one of the planets that gave rise to the Earth because it is the Earth. That time period includes the Thea impact, but is not exclusive to the time before it. Anyway, that sums up the video. If there are any other things I missed, tell me in the comments. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I'll see you in the next video.